Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and hey girls, welcome to the episode 181 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, recording this one on the Gold Coast here. I'm a Gold Coast hotel. It is beautiful weather outside, perfect Australian, 27 degrees. I could walk to the beach from here and I have a whole day to myself. The entire day can do whatever I want and I tell you what I don't want It's to go outside and enjoy the sun. I have been in here for fucking uh, hours editing, posting, doing a bit of reading, uh, listening to music. Not once have I thought, man, you know what I should do? Experience the Gold Coast because there is nothing for me in this fucking city. Nothing. I I googled, there's no comic book stores, there's not even a good bookstore. I went to the fucking shopping center yesterday, had a walk around, right? They had a Gucci store, that's for me, but I went in there, I didn't buy anything, no, because that's what I am, a serial browser, my favorite shit. That's what I love to do, have a look and then be like, oh yeah, if I were a millionaire, I would buy that, but you know what? I'm not, so I'm going home. Waste their time. That's what that's what it's about. You know when that shit was tr- was trending on Twitter, like Waste Boys Time 2017 or wh- whenever the fuck it was? I'm starting a new movement, and that is Waste Stores Time 2020. And I think we can all, you know, we can all really be a part of this movement, and that is just Waste Retails Time. And I'm not talking like minimum wage cotton on retail workers or fucking people that work at JB Hi-Fi because uh, they have a nose ring and they're like, oh, I can work at JB Hi-Fi because I got a nose ring and a tattoo of Super Mario on my shoulder. That means uh, I have a personality (laughs) instead of a brain disease, right? I could could get, man, how many many more tattoos is it going to take for you to realize that maybe you're just a bit of a boring character? Hunt. Like, oh, I'm unique and quirky. Really? Is liking every single movie that Disney makes a personality? Uh, is that really unique? I listen to Triple J and make sure I watch every Marvel film. That means that I have a personality. No, it doesn't. That means you're spoon fed a personality from our corporate overlords. That being said, right? What was I saying? Oh, yeah, waste retail workers' time. And I'm not talking minimum wage, right? Those cunts get spit on enough by all of the Karens and Sharons of the world, right? I want to talk to your manager. I am the manager. They make managers 19 years old because it means we they don't have to pay us as much, ma'am, right? Now, what the fuck do you want? You're at Cotton On, yeah? Of course the quality's going to suck. Of course the backpack isn't going to protect your laptop properly. It was made by an 11-year-old in Vietnam. What do you want, sir? Miss Karen, Miss Sharon, Sir Sharon. I'm talking about all those high end stores, all those stores that you walk past, and there's just a line of fucking Chinese foreign students out the front, cashed up from their parents who are billionaires, probably because they're the ones who ultimately make everything at Cotton On. They're the ones that own the factories that employ all the nine-year-olds in China. So they send their kids over to Australia because it gives them a good tax benefit. And for some reason, uh, that, that they just have millions of dollars. They're probably lying to their parents. Yeah, look, in Australia... Uh, bread costs three hundred thousand dollars, so I'm going to need ten million to just to survive for a month, and then they just spend it all on fucking clothes, dude. If you walk into any of those luxury clothing stores and you're not Korean, they don't even look at you, bro. They won't even look at you twice. It's like uh, I I feel like for for the first time in my life, I know exactly uh, what it feels like to be uh, a black guy at a car store, you know, like the staff are like, yeah, he can look, but he's definitely not going to be buying. So I'm not even going to walk up to them, you know, like that kind of discrimination. I understand it now. If you go into any of those high end stores, right, anything that sells t-shirts for $500, if you go in there and you are not Chinese, you won't even get eye contact out of those motherfuckers. So that's why I'm launching this new movement, right? It is waste high end stores time 2020. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in those stores and we're going to have a big fat browse and we ain't buying shit. 
You understand me? Do you know what I did today out of pure boredom? No, yesterday. Out of pure boredom, bro. Zero intention of buying stuff. Looked at my bank account and was like, I can't afford shit. I bought my one nice thing after my tour. I got my fancy boots and that is it for the whole of 2020 until I achieve something else, right? I, I, I don't get anything else. I don't deserve anything else nice. I get one nice thing after a significant achievement in my career. This year, it was my tour and how well my channel's been going. So I got myself some fucking stupid, ridiculous boots. That was my one nice thing, all right? And I knew that I wasn't going to buy anything. But you know what I did anyway? I went into that Louis Vuitton store and I made them show me their $3,000 bag that I had zero intention of buying because I just wanted to look at it. And I wasn't going to buy shit. And the retail worker knew I wasn't going to buy shit because am I a Chinese foreign student with millionaire parents? No, I am not. I am the, the tallest, longest comedian in this country. And I cannot afford anything in that fucking store, but I will try it on in front of the mirror because I'm bored. And that's how it's going to be, man. That's just how it's going to be, right? And you know what? That's revenge for all of those poor little foxes that Louis Vuitton have tortured to death just to make a coat. (laughs) Oh, man. So, yeah, I'm totally behind that movement. For, for too long, we have been avoiding those stores because of a fairly legitimate reason of which... And that reason is, oh, I can't afford anything in there, so I don't really want to waste their time. Well, you know what's a waste of time? I couldn't think of anything more... <laughs> Couldn't think of anything else that waste your time. Guys, what I'm saying is I'm very bored on the fucking Gold Coast. There's nothing for me in this city here. There's nothing for me. There's nothing for me to do, right? What am I going to do? Go to all the fucking dream world? You reckon they'll let me in after the joke? I don't think so. Besides, I've already been to dream world. I went there with Luke. I went to dream world and movie world, right? And I am literally too tall for all of the rides. The the limit is two meters. I am two meters. And I, I guess technically... That means I can go on the rides, but you don't want to be at the limit, do you, right? You don't want to be just in. You don't want to be just safe by a millimeter. That's not how I want to survive a ride. I don't want to feel that metal bar touch my hair as I go through. That, that, that's not how I'm going to enjoy a ride. That's, that's just a near-death experience, isn't it? That's not fun. That's not my idea of fun. So I'm not doing that shit, right? And I'm not... Here's the thing, too. Like, I'm not in like the city part of the Gold Coast, I am right smack bang in the middle of the tourist part of Gold Coast, right? I'm at fucking, uh, is it surfers? I don't know. I'm where where like the, the only thing that's edible, right, is Starbucks because every other store is fucking kebabs. Like the whole city is based around what would idiots on schoolies buy at 4 a.m. just before King hitting a stranger? And that's kebabs, McDonald's, horrible uh, Asian food, like terrible lemon chicken that would give you diabetes. That's how much sugar is in it. And then just the world's worst burgers. And then also La Poqueta. That's the only thing that's in this fucking city is just La Poqueta and domestic violence. That's the only thing that exists in the Gold Coast. And skin cancer. And you can't eat skin cancer, can you? Although I saw, a, I saw, a, I saw quite a few 50-year-old men that were very flaky. Flaky enough to serve you a nice meal. But that's disgusting and I'm sorry that I said it. And I regret saying that and putting that image in my own mind, let alone yours. My apologies. Dear God, that's disgusting. <laughs> So I've been sitting here just editing. I'm on the Gold Coast because uh, that's where my my tour management is. Um, so we just I flew up here and I just started planning 2020. And man, I got some I got some shit in store for you guys. Finally, uh, it is time to start ramping up 
uh, and reveal what I filmed in America. Uh, you guys know I was in America for a month. I was in New York for two weeks pursuing a bit of stand-up stuff and then I was in LA doing a very secret uh, little TV pilot and uh, it is time to reveal that. I think, I think, don't quote me, but I think we're going to start dropping some stuff around January, February um, and uh, without a doubt, in terms of like creative projects outside stand-up, right? It's exactly what I want to make. So hopefully that'll be a success. I won't talk too much about it until I know exactly what's going on with it. But uh, some shit's going to be coming out very soon and you guys are going to lose your minds, bro. Um, also, I think uh, I'm pretty sure this is happening. If, it's not ha- if it hasn't been done uh, by the time Sunday comes around, Luke and I are doing a regional Australia tour together in February. First tour, stand-up comedy tour we've ever done. It's not the Luke and Lewis show live. It is us doing stand-up uh, at separate times. So uh, about 40 minutes from me, 40 minutes from Luke Kidgel, and we are jumping in a giant RV with beds in it. We're taking Keelan. We're going to take another editor guy with us, and we are going all up the east coast of Australia doing every regional town we could think of and I think it's going to be a lot of fun and also quite horrible because you're not allowed to poo in the RV. You can wee but you can't poo, right? So it's going to be two weeks of very planned, meticulous poos, right? We're going to have to stop off in caravan parks. All right, everybody jump out. It is time for your one poo of the week. That's the sh- that's I'm looking forward to this tour but I'm not looking forward to like planning out my poos cuz nobody really wants to structure a poo do they no one really wants to put that in their google calendar yeah google calendar is for like haircuts uh flight dates maybe uh, reminders to call mum because you haven't spoken to her for three months and you feel a little bit guilty about it it's not for scheduling in a poo is it right no And that means that, man, Keelan, my editor, he is really going to have to work on his diet if he wants to survive this tour because but judge, just judging by the shit that he eats all day every day there is zero way he could plan a poo, right? I can only imagine that the way that guy eats his fucking diet Every poo is a fucking emergency and it's an unpredictable one. It's not something that happens every day. It might happen every three days. Sometimes it might be in the morning. Sometimes it might be in the afternoon. Sometimes it might be in the middle of a conversation with his mother and his body will just be like, all right, (laughs) it's an emergency, time to evacuate. And wherever the fuck he is, he has to go now. So that's going to be a very interesting experience for him. And, and I hope he is listening to this. Mate, sort it out because this RV shit is no joke. If Whoever shits must empty. Because that's the thing, right? An RV, it, you have to like empty the poos, yeah? If you shit. The only thing I know about touring in an RV is that one horrible, disgusting, terrible awful vlog that Josh Wade did when he was touring in an RV and I think I've only watched about a couple of minutes of it but I will never watch the full thing because all I can remember is him driving down some fucking desert road in the middle of nowhere and they had filled up their RV with poo and and it was not something that you were supposed to shit in you're only supposed to wee and it's also supposed to be for like recycled shower water or something right but obviously these guys did not plan their poos and they were traveling with someone who looked like he had a terrible diet and all i remember is that man pulling out the tank that is supposed to be only full of piss and recycled shower water and removing it from the RV and trying to pour out shit on the road while he dry reached and vomit and Josh ran into the desert instead of back into the RV because he would rather die in the wilderness than live with that smell. And I that cannot happen on this fucking RV tour. So grab your tickets at loosespears.com slash gigs. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. 
If you're in a regional town, chances are we are coming to you. If you're on the East Coast, I think it's East Coast, or I might be an idiot, could be West Coast. It's probably East, right? We're just driving up and then we're driving all the way back, doing as many shows as we can for all you regional cunts uh, to have come out and have a laugh. So if you are living in a regional town in Australia, loosebeers.com slash gigs, it'll have all of the dates up there. There's a fuckload of them and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, Luke's going to be there. We'll both be doing stand up and it'll be kind of like a little practice run because after that, boy, it's time for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I haven't done it for two years. I am making my big return, uh, my hometown and I'm excited for it. Tickets for that are not on sale yet, but I'm excited for that. Um, anyway, enough about stand up. Oh, apart from 2020, uh, I know I just announced, I know I just talked about doing a lot of Australia dates, but uh, Australia is going to have to take a little bit of a back seat 2020 because the second half of the year, I got my eye on the UK, the US, a bunch of other places. So I know all you cunts are like, oh, when are you going to come to the UK? I'm coming. Next year, I'm coming. And all these people from the States, when are you going to come to the United States? Bro, when Donald Trump makes immigration a little bit easier i know that you guys are so terrified about immigration and and there is a legitimate threat of illegal immigration but can you i like i really want to work some of that white privilege that all these chicks with red hair and front fringes keep talking about i want to be i want to walk in and, and and just be like hey my name is not carlos i got no tan i burned in the sun please let me in uh, it's very, very strict with America. You cannot perform legally without like a like a visa or an O one uh, or a green card, something like that. So I am I am working on that, and I have have been working on that all year. It's fucking crazy expensive. Like it, it it's it's literally. I got quoted from a lawyer because you have to. It's so difficult, man. If you want to perform in America, it's working in America. So you have to have an employer. Now with stand up, you don't you don't really have an employer. You just do shows and then collect your money. And then you split it up between the people who helped. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't have a boss going, all right, your shift is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you get paid this much and and we make this much from your labor. It doesn't really work like that. It's like such a contractor thing. So it's so hard to get approved for stand-up because you need to kind of say that you have something that you don't, which is a job. No comedians have jobs. We do shows and then whoever booked us takes a little bit of the money there's no employers in this shit right so it's very hard to 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 get approved to perform in the states because you need to have like a touring company that goes yeah this guy's our employee and they have to like they would only go through the effort if you are going to make them a fuckload of money and let me tell you the australian comedian with a kind of big youtube channel is not making millions on his us tour he's breaking even maybe right and that's where i'm at so to get approved for a visa it costs like $8000 in lawyer fees plus all of the fees to apply so it looks like about $10000 just to apply and that does not guarantee that you're going to get it and then the application form is pretty much you need to prove that you're famous that's essentially what it is it's like all of the dictionary definition attributes of a famous person you kind of need to prove that you have those which makes sense because if you're not a successful comedian who can't if you're, if you're an unsuccessful comic who can't sell tickets, why the fuck would they want you? You're not going to end up paying taxes ever in that country. So that makes sense, right? You need to prove that you're famous because that means you will make lots of money, which means you will pay taxes to the government. It's like an investment, basically. They're like, yeah, you can come over here because if you come over here, you'll make money and then we'll make money. So... It's very, very difficult. It costs like $10,000 to just apply and then you need to prove that you're famous, which is like uh, news articles about you, jobs that you've had, things that you've done, achievements you've made. And I've got a lot of news articles written about me, guys. But none of those are very positive, are they? That's the one fucking detriment of doing this shit and, and of hoaxing all of these news articles is that, yes, I got plenty of news articles about me, but none of them are true. And none of them are positive. The only ones that are written about me are like shit of me fucking pretending to be something that I am not or the aftermath, which is that news company writing a passive-aggressive shitty news article about how they got caught not doing their job properly. So it's not really a positive write-up at all, is it? 
and I don't invite fucking reviewers to my shows because I hate those cunts, right? If they're getting paid to be there, they can buy a ticket. I'm not taking a seat away from one of you cunts to give it to some journalist who's just going to bitch about how offensive I am, right? So I don't have any reviews about my stand-up, which was one of the fucking criteria. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pay 10 grand, roll the dice, and then they'll go, oh, sorry, uh, you're not famous enough to come here. Fuck you. But I'm working on it. Hopefully US will happen next year. At the very least, I will go there. I can't fucking perform because it's illegal, but I will go there as a tourist and be like, oh, wow, look at the Statue of Liberty. I wish I lived here. Hey, you know, maybe that's the positive. Donald Trump getting impeached. That's cr- I'm trying to understand all this impeachment business just looking at it on Twitter, which is the worst place to understand it because 50% of the people are celebrating, the, oh, we've killed him, we've killed him, and then 50% of the people are going, oh, this is bullshit. I, I don't know why people would celebrate uh, a president getting impeached. I feel like it's just like, yes, fuck yeah, we got rid of the driver of the bus that we're on and everyone on the bus is celebrating. Meanwhile, it's veering into the oncoming lane. This is good for all of us. Uh, guys, who's driving? Family of six, dead. <laughs> I don't know. It, uh, base, here's what I think. From my very, very, very limited view of what I've looked up and what I'm talking about is like eight tweets. Here's what I think is going to happen, right? My very informed view. It's gone through. It's, the impeachment has passed through the House, which is like the first level of government, right? So, yep, they got through the first level. Then they have to get it through the Senate. The Senate is majority Republican, i.e. majority people on Trump's team. So it won't pass through the Senate. And then it's just going to give Trump more fuel to be like, I told you, they're trying to get rid of me because they know that they can't win the election. And then all of his supporters are going to go, yeah, they're trying to cheat. They're playing dirty. So I'm going to show up to those fucking voting booths and then he'll win the next election and go, ha ha, I told you. And then he'll go, maybe I should stay for another four years and everyone will laugh and he'll laugh but then everyone will go ha <laughs> he's joking yeah why well, he's surely he's joking no. <laughs> yeah right and he'll go ha <laughs> and you go wait you didn't say that you were joking he'll go ha <laughs> imagine if I did that and they're like yeah yeah but you're joking right and he go ha <laughs> yeah I love you guys woo Another four years. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and then the firing squads come out. I don't know. It is funny how the apocalypse has just not happened. Like how everyone was just freaking out and everyone's been freaking out for, for his entire presidency. Like the apocalypse is going to happen. And it's just like, ah, oh, it kind of hasn't. Hey. But then on the flip side, uh, he also hasn't done anything that he said he was going to do. Like, ah, I'm going to build that wall. He builds like a 30 centimeter ruler sized wall out of fucking tin tubes you could find outside the shed of my warehouse. And there's like footage of Mexicans just climbing it easy as pie. And like, oh, fuck, we didn't build it. I'm going to stop all these unnecessary wars. Pulls out of one, puts everything he pulled out, plus more into another one. Fuck yeah. Although the economy is going great. So that's good. That's great for me, man. I really, really hope that the economy of America keeps growing because fuck that US dollar exchange rate is great for me. I get like all of my online income, which is not much because I get demonetized on fucking everything from the US. So every like point that it goes, that the American dollar goes up is better for me. It's at like 1.4 now, meaning every dollar I get, I actually get a dollar 40. That's fucking great for me. It was horrible when I went over there though. I was like, wait, wait, what do you mean? My money's worth 1.4 times less. This is bullshit. Like every dollar that I brought over, it was only like 70 cents or something at the time. I think it might be different now, but at the time, like every dollar was only 70 cents. So if I brought 10 bucks, I only bought $7. It was crazy. It made everything so much more expensive. I fucking hated it. And then immediately upon uh, my arrival back home, I was like, this is the best shit ever. I hope Australia's economy tanks and America's prospers. Anyway, 
What have I been doing here? Let's have a look at my little notes here. Um, oh, man. So, I see they are making a female version of Fight Club. Why the fuck do all of these companies insist on doing this shit? It does not work, right? And it's not... I know that it's not like it's not going to be called Fight Club, but that's how they're fucking marketing it as like the female Fight Club. It's like, bro, it's I think it's called like uh, like Chick Fight or something garbage like that. It's got like Alec Baldwin in it. It's called like Chick Fight. What's it called? Let me have a look. Alec Baldwin Fight Club. Bitches. I bet it'll still come up. Chick Fight. Yeah, it's called Chick Fight and they're, it's an action comedy, but they're marketing it as the female version of Fight Club, which it's not. Like, this could very well be an incredible movie, but they've decided to market it as female Fight Club because they know that it will make Twitter angry and argue. Can we just get over this fucking outrage marketing, please? Why can't you just be like, hey, we've made a movie and it's a bunch of chicks fighting. It's going to be good and funny. It's got Alec Baldwin in it. I love that they're going with like the female girl power angle, but the first name promoted in every article and even by the movie themselves is Alec Baldwin. Like when we're making it, we're making a movie all about women fighting. Who's in it? Alec Baldwin. What about the chicks? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Here's what I would accept, right? The only situation I would accept a female version of Fight Club is if it was literally a female version of Fight Club. I'm talking, right? Replace every single character in that film with women, right? On the condition that you don't change anything else. I'm talking you don't change the plot, how it is filmed, the costumes, what happens in the film, not even the fucking names, dude. I would watch that shit, and I guarantee so would everybody else, is if you literally had female version of Fight Club. It's called Fight Club. You don't even market it as a women-only film. You just release that shit, and even the main character... Even though they're a woman, they're still called Tyler Durden. And the dialogue doesn't change at all. Not even the pronouns in the dialogue. Everybody calls them he. All of the male characters, even though they're portrayed by women who look like women, they get called he. They get called by their male names. Tyler Durden's in it. Even that fucking scene where Tyler Durden has their shirt off and they look really ripped. You know, that fucking photo that Tumblr girls would post to be like, oh my God, dream body. Where the, except the only reason he looks good is because of makeup, lighting, color grading, and camera. Whereas in reality, any actual male who looks like that would just look like shit under any other circumstance, but because it's a movie and because Brad Pitt has a very good looking head, girls go, oh my God. And guys go, dude, how do I achieve that body? I'll tell you, I have that body. Here's how you do it. You don't eat food. That's how you get that body. You don't eat food and you do 60 push ups. You have that body. Bam, it's done. And then, if you want to have that body but also look good, you need. Million dollar budget, 16 cameras, professional lighting setup, five makeup artists, and a professional color grader, as well as uh, uh, someone to spray a mist bottle on your body so it looks like you've been sweating when really all you've been doing is not eating food. That's how you get that body. It's a fucking illusion. That's what I want to see. The all-female version of Fight Club. Nothing changes. It's just women beating the fuck out of women, wearing men's clothes with male names, talking about each other as if they were men. That's what I want to fucking see. That scene where Tyler Durden has his shirt off, it's like a chick 
tits out and it's like it's like it's not like a a woman that has very small breasts it's like fucking uh it's who's that bitch in that fucking uh movie no that tv series that awful unfunny thing about those chicks working at a diner and she basically only gets acting jobs because she has huge melons what's that you know what I'm talking about. Fucking two broke girls, right? Two huge tits. And it's just her and she's Tyler Durden beating the fuck out of another woman who, who, who is insisting that they are male. Nothing changes. I would watch that shit and I think everybody else would too. <laughs> Even Ghostbusters would have been good if it was the same script and the only thing that changed was the gender. That's what they need to do, man. In the fi- if they really want <laughs> if they really want female-led films to go good and if they really want to relaunch this shit, stop relaunching franchises with women at the forefront and then changing it to be about girl power. Just only change the actors. Not none of the script, nothing. Like what would be sick? If what would be even better? If it was just... Comment below. I want to see your suggestions. What would the perfect gender swap movie be? I want to see... Okay, I've thought of it already. This would be the biggest blockbuster event of the year, okay? If you didn't change anything, right? You didn't change the costume. You didn't change the dialogue. You didn't change the script. And you didn't change the even the pronouns and the names in the film. This would be the best female version of a film ever, right? This is what I would make. Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain, right? And and this film, right? Initially, it's Heath Ledger and some other guy who was gay enough to kiss Heath Ledger, right? I don't remember the other actor's name, right? Uh, but here's the plot of the film, okay? It's two gay, two secretly gay cowboys cheat on their wives with each other when they go camping or whatever the fuck they were doing, right? Uh, And it's this beautiful love story about two in-the-closet cowboys finding love with each other and it's absolutely tragic. I actually really like that film, but it would be even better right, if it was two gay cowboys portrayed by women because you would have the best scissoring scenes ever, yeah, scissoring in a tent, how often do we get to see that, you don't even see that on Pornhub, bro, if I googled scissoring in a tent, wouldn't find many results and I definitely wouldn't find anybody wearing a cowboy hat, no way, (laughs) this is what I want to see, man, this is what I want to fucking see. And it would be even better because if you only changed those two characters, everybody else can be the same. Everybody else can be their original gender, right? You don't change the script. You just change the two ca- the two gay cowboys, right? Having this secret affair all of a sudden, right? Not only... <laughs> It just becomes the most lesbian film ever because these two cowboys would be cheating on their wives. Like, they already have wives. They're already lesbians. They're just cheating on on their wives in a tent. It's the best film ever. And then everyone's, like, really homophobic. and Like, oh, sex is supposed to be with a man and a woman, not a man and a man. And they're yelling at this at two lesbians who have wives. And it's just, it's just really confusing to watch, but it is never acknowledged. Like, why are all of these um, farmers who hate man-on-man sex yelling at two lesbians uh, for having sex with each other when everybody knows they're already gay and have wives? Is this, like, uh, against extramarital sex? Or is it against... It's just really homophobic for seemingly no reason. How confusing. That's what I would make. I want to know what you guys would make. What would you gender swap? It goes the other way too. What would? It, well, how about a female-led film that, that, that you change to be about men? Fuck, there are none because every single female-led film is just a remake of a male-led film these days. What's a really... Hunger Games. Nah, but that's not even really like... Like that would still make just as much sense if it was just a dude. What would... Uh, I, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Fuck. Mean Girls? 
Yeah, Mean Girls. That would be good, right? If it was because it, it would be so good because it would still be called Mean Girls, but it's a bunch of fucking hairy dudes wearing crop tops and push up bras, just being bitchy to each other and making out with footballers. That would be that'd be fucking hilarious. I would really want to see that shit. Like see Regina George but it's just some massive footballer wearing a head brace, getting hit by a bus, and the bus crumbles. He survives. <laughs> that would be fucking sick. Anyway, what I'm saying is, if you're going to do a female remake, only change the gender. I would watch that shit. Um, what, have, what have I been doing this week? Oh, that's right. So, <sighs> I know I did. I, yeah. You know what? Hey, here's my promise to you. 2020, this will make sure that I can't break this promise because I said last week, I'm not going to miss any more episodes and then last week I missed a fucking episode, right? So here's my promise to you. In all of 2020, I promise, I swear to you, Spearhead Sunnies will be the most inconsistent podcast imaginable. I swear it, right? And here's my goal. My goal is to break that promise, right? So if I break that promise, you guys will be so pleasantly surprised. And that is my goal, to break that promise. But if I don't manage to do this every fucking Sunday for all of 2020, you guys can't get mad because I swore to you that's what I was going to do. I'm just a man of my word. So checkmate, cunts. You can't complain anymore. 2020, it's over. Complaining is done. <laughs> I was in... um. I feel like it's an acceptable reason. You know what? I also, I, no, no, I would say that there are quite a few episodes I've missed that have just been me being a piece of shit, right? But this one, look at this fucking man spread that I'm doing right now. This is why you need to watch the video version of Spearhead Sunlands because this is a fucking alpha energy pose right now. I am just really presenting myself to the audience here, right? It is the most... The, the biggest fucking man spread you've ever seen in your life. I look like I'm about to give birth. That's how fucking alpha this position is. I'm about to create life straight up ya. <laughs> right? So the reason why I missed last week was last week I spent uh, at How To Basics House creating an entire series of cooking without instructions. And I am proud to say and excited to say I finally did it. I finally found the time this year. And 2020, there will be minimum one episode of cooking without instructions every single month, probably more. I'm not sure, but minimum one every month. I have 12 episodes every in the fucking bag. I'm giving it to uh, another editor, Tom, uh, who, if you remember any of my uh, Oz Rap parody clips, he filmed and edited all of those. He's an absolute beast and a monster, and he's very quick. So I'm giving every single episode to him. He's going to turn all of them around, and I'm going to start releasing them when I have all of them. Um, that's the goal. And I'm thinking what I'll do is I will give... Um, I'm kind of tossing up... I'm not sure what I want to do with Patreon supporters. Because I will have all of the episodes, um, I can either, right, give them to Patreon supporters all at once to binge watch, like I'm fucking Netflix, or I will give each episode a month early. I'm I'm torn. I would love to know your feedback on what you guys think. If you're a Patreon supporter, if you're going to become a Patreon supporter, let me know what you would prefer. I feel like giving them all out at once might be a little bit lackluster, or might just be too spoilery. And also, I'm just kind of fucking worried about some asshole just re-uploading all of them as soon as I do that. So, I don't know. I'm not sure. But it'll at least be a month early for patron supporters, I think. Um, because I appreciate you cunts. And that's how I spent That's how I spent the entire month of Patreon. Very rarely do I spend... The, like, I, obviously, I spend the support every month. But uh, very rarely do I spend an entire the entire month on one thing that was like flights, flying Keelan up, paying Keelan and, and all that kind of shit and now paying Tom as well to edit them. So that's what I'm doing with uh, probably two, two and a half months of Patreon support is just getting a minimum 12 episodes done. Got some great guests, dude. Um, How to Basics episode. I've got him for a full episode. His is fucking hilarious. Really crazy. And uh, Jeff uh, from Jeff Abel and Friends is is just the most it's it's so insane that it's like 
it's not even really a cooking without instructions. It's just me trying to maintain a hold on Jeff's sanity for 20 minutes. That's what that episode is going to be. It's fucking chaos, but really, really good. Um, and, and, and you know what? I can't wait. I'm going to drop a trailer and it's going to have the best moments from every single episode. I can't wait to drop that in like a minute 30, just like bang, 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 bang. It'll be the coolest shit ever. I'm really excited to edit that one. Uh, I'm doing that one myself, I reckon. It's going to be fucking sick. So yeah, Cooking Without Instructions, all for 2020. And I got a bunch of other projects coming too that you guys will be very excited about. Um, But I won't spoil too much of it. Comedy special? Huh? What was that? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I got to, uh, cause I was at how to basic, uh, he was helping out with some of the videos I helped, uh, out with one of his and I'm finally going to be like a, in one, I'm going to be in a full video. I have a huge scene in, in this, in one of the how to basic videos, which is so cool, man. Cause I've been watching that since, since like fucking 2011, 2012, maybe he's a true OG. He has 14 million subscribers. That's one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. Definitely in the country, he's the. I think he's the most subscribed person, like creator, in the whole country. So, shout out to him, man. That's fucking sick. Uh, and he works hard for that shit. I didn't realize how hard it is to do his videos. He's a bit of a behind the scenes on a how to basic video. Firstly, the most surprising thing about the guy is he is honestly right. How to basic is honestly the cleanest, neatest. Uh, most organized person I have ever met in my life. He's always cleaning, always moving stuff. He would he would clean up my shit. He would organize my shit without me asking him to or even really wanting him to. He would just see my shit that was like out and he would just collect it all and put it in its place while I was doing something else, right? And, and it wasn't even like messy. Like I was at his house, so I was trying to be respectful, but he would just find like my bag and my sunglasses and my sunglasses case and he would just put it in the case and then put the case in the bag and then the bag in my room. And I'd be like, what the fuck? That's so neat. It was really the opposite of of what you're expecting, really, because he's like, you watch his videos, they're incredibly messy. But it makes sense, yeah? Like, if you're making an an apocalyptic mess every single week in your house, you have to be the neatest person ever because if you weren't, if you were like me, you would just live in a slum and it would smell like shit all the time. So that was really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in like a, I won't spoil the video. I think it'll come out in the next couple of weeks or so, depending on what he's doing. But I help out uh, with a video and we have, a, we have a, a huge, very funny fight scene in it that should go for like at least one, two minutes. So that's really cool because that'll be like two thirds of the video. Very, very cool. That's a little checklist of my cool shit I'd like to do one day. Do a proper a cameo in a, in a how-to basic video instead of just my voice reading off a brand deal because he can't sp- fucking talk, obviously. Um, fuck, it was funny. I, I did like a, a an ad read for him. So he got a brand deal, but obviously he doesn't speak. So he needed someone to read it. So he sent it to me and I recorded it and, uh, and then sent it off to him. And then it came out and I shared the video and my fans got so fucking mad. Like, oh, you're not really in this. You just read off a brand deal. I'm like, yeah, but it's, but I'm still me, right? And the video is still good. People just felt tricked. So this time, it'll be an actual thing. My face, me doing shit, and I play an actual important role in the video. Also, it's still a brand deal. <laughs> so watch out for that. All right. So how long are we on here? Ah, oh, 40 minutes. Let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end. Is there anything else I wanted to? Oh yeah, dude. Another fucking shout out from PewDiePie. That's crazy. The second one. That is so cool, man. Big thanks to uh, to Felix. I call him Felix now because he's talked about me twice on his channel. So we're friends. Um, that's so cool, man. Uh, and I fucking... All you, I told you, cunts. I fucking said so. I told you, right? I told you who he had seen my shit before. I wasn't crazy. I said in the first shout out, I was like, in my podcast, I was like, ah, the way that he said my name, he didn't like have to be, he didn't go, oh yeah, so this is a video from uh, Lewis Spear. Like he knew it. He knew my name and I felt like I, he's, and then he also commented on my video when it had 10,000 views. When I did the PewDiePie shout out video, like that fucking gag, right? He commented on it then. So so I was theorizing on my podcast. I was like, 
very minimum, bare minimum, he has seen some of my stuff before. The vaccine video has gone mega viral. Uh, the SoFlo Antonio one has gone super viral and was like about YouTube culture. So many YouTubers saw that. Um, at the very minimum, he's seen some of my shit. And I theorized that because he commented so early, I think he might be a subscriber or maybe his editors are a subscriber. Because cunts make videos about PewDiePie every fucking minute, right? And they get way more views than my shit. So for him to comment on my shit within 10,000 views, it makes me think at the, at the least someone fucking DM'd him and was like, oh, check this guy out. Or he's a subscriber, right? But then in his second shout out, he goes, I've seen this video before. It's really good. Lewis made it. And then, yeah, so that's fucking really cool. That's like Led Zeppelin shouting out your rock band. That's like fucking Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle going, this guy's great at stand up. So that's that's really fucking cool to me. So thanks very much to PewDiePie for that. That was very, very cool to do it a second time because that's so... He doesn't need to do that. Um, and uh, dude, today, I'm recording this on Thursday, right? So it's probably already happened, but I'm going to pass 400,000 subscribers. I'm looking at it now. I'm at 399.116 and I'm just refreshing the page. Oh my God, hotel internet. Oh fuck, I'm 399.200. So it's going to happen today, man. I've gone up 30,000 subscribers in like the last six days from the vaccine video going viral again and the Marxism conference going viral again, which is fucking so super cool. That's really, really great. Um, so yeah, man, I, I really appreciate that. Everyone sharing my shit around. I just put it on IGTV. I'm going to put the vaccine one on TikTok as well, see what it does there. Probably won't do much because they're all kids. But um, yeah, I appreciate you guys like letting me repost that when it goes viral because it's just silly not to, you know, like fucking if all these, every time new people find it, they come to my channel and they check out my Instagram and it just wasn't on there. So I had to put it up again. Um, and a big fuck you to all the people who talk shit when I re-uploaded that video to my main channel because uh, that uh, was a fucking brilliant decision and I don't give a fuck if you can't saw it again. It means new people see it and that's great for me. Uh, and that really means that 2019, dude, as of recording, I have gone up 210,000 subscribers since this time last year. And that is, I was at 190. So that's more than double. Uh, and that's just because I took the internet thing seriously for one year. So let's see what happens at the end of 2020 when we're at the end of two years. Uh, and it's such a great, I'm, I'm so fucking glad that I just decided to take control and just prioritize you guys and just give my shit out for free. Um, 2020 is going to be even bigger, even better. Um, I'm touring actually a little bit less. I know I just announced a bunch of shows, but I'm actually touring a little bit less so that I can do the online thing even better. And um, I'm going to be putting out uh, so much stand-up comedy clips next year. I'm also going to be aiming for at least one a month. But if you think about it, you know, I filmed my whole tour. We haven't released really any clips from that on the main channel apart from the tour vlogs, but we'll cut out the best hits of those and put them on the main channel. Um, and I've got a bunch in the bank and I've got some even from fucking last year's tour that I have not posted yet. And I'm also going to be filming this fucking huge regional tour that we're doing, which is like 20 dates. And then also the comedy festival, which is like 23 dates. So there is going to be a shit load of crowd work, stand up clips and much, much more comedy special coming soon to 2020. And it's going to be great. All right. So it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end, if my fucking hotel internet will load. If you guys uh, are new to the podcast, welcome. Fuck you. Um, the <laughs> the miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. That is where I answer questions and uh, give life advice to people who email the show. If you would like to email the show, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. If you tweet me or ask me or comment on a video or anything about what that email is, I will not respond. I say it every episode and you will be punished for being an idiot. It is podcast at loosebeers.com. Um, okay. How do I figure out what I want to do? How to communicate better? Hey, sick cunt. I would like to start by saying I've been a fan since early 2018 
cooking with instructions, absolutely amazing, and your live shows are phenomenal. Thank you very much. I've seen Independent Variable, No Slide Season, and, and the live Luke and Lewis podcast, uh, and I love them all. Um, for reference, I brought my dad to the show, and you called him an alcoholic. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Stand by what you said. You're the best comedian I've ever seen. Stop sucking my dick, bro. Um, this belief was only reinforced by the gay Hitler joke. Sick cunt, thank you. Where the fuck is... It? Blah, blah, blah. For context, I'm 17. I've done well in high school. Predicted ATAR of 86. Dude, smart cunt. I got a fucking... I don't know what I got. That's how badly I did. They didn't tell me to spare my feelings. Um, predicted ATAR of doing 86, doing high levels of maths and physics. I also did English, but as you can see, I'm shit at that. You're writing fine, dude. You're just writing a lot of compliments that I skipped over. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm a smart cunt. Uh, um, engineering genuinely interests me right now, but I'm not 100% sure if it's what I want to do. I also want to join the army in some way, likely through engineering. In your podcast, you often say everyone should take a gap year to figure out what they want to do. But I don't see how that will help me figure out what I want to do as call center jobs and warehouse jobs don't give you experience in any other field. Um, also, I did try a full-time job. It was meant to be a trial week, but I got sick, so it was more of a trial day, and I quit. I fucking hated it. So now, all I know is warehouse slash meaningless labor jobs aren't for me. So really, my question is, how do I figure out what I want to do? Uh, it's the advice that I've given out millions of times before. The short version is, fucking try things. Just do things, try shit, uh, get jobs, uh, engage with hobbies, uh, talk to people who are, who have already completed what you you may want to complete talk to an engineer talk to someone who's done the army uh, I've done a whole video on it about the on the Luke and Lewis highlights channel I explain it much better there go and check that out I'm going to do your second question my second question is you seem to be very sharp-witted and can respond quickly to comments and do so properly how do you get good at it as you would have seen at the Luke and Lewis show I'm pretty retarded <laughs> I couldn't even think to say thank you after Luke apologized directly to me for your priest jokes. This happens in everyday life. I struggle to respond quickly 90% of the time. For example, at a, at, the, at a restaurant, the waitress said, thanks for coming. And I said, thank you for your service like an idiot. That's not that bad. And other stuff like that. The only time I can talk properly is with close friends or when I'm drunk. So how can I get better at communicating? Um, you know what? Uh... I would say I struggle with this a little bit too, especially because I'm someone who doesn't drink. So like I never had that social lubricant, you know, because that's one thing about alcohol is it does make it uh, easier to communicate with other people, but it's ba it basically just takes away your inhibitions. Commun your, you struggling to communicate is you, and I used to do this, this is you, right, having a little bit of low self-esteem and being worried about what people will perceive of you and what you say. Therefore, you think, what should I say in this moment? What am I supposed to say now? And that thought is not what you should be thinking because whatever you come up with in that situation will be the wrong thing because it will be inorganic and won't be authentic to you. It will just be what you think you should have said in this situation to either please the other person or whatever your goal is, right? Um, what I what really actually helped me really uh, is I did sales uh, when I was 18. I had a sales job and I had a really good manager who taught me how to convince people. Uh, and also, I just started reading books on communicating. Um, a really, really good, really, really simple book is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a fucking brilliant book. It's by, it was written in like the 19 fucking 20s or 50s or like it's quite a long time ago, but it holds up today because we haven't changed too much. And it basically, it, it is about sales and it's about selling people but that all that is is just charisma and getting along people and and using your social influence how to win win friends and, and influence people really really did help me it just really broke down conversing with people and getting along with people to kind of just a bit of a science and it explained why things work and why things don't work and how empathy can really be 
the way to talk to someone properly. Um, also, what really helped me, I would say that helped me a lot because it, it put it into words, what I was trying to do. It put it into words and steps and structured it a little bit and it gave me things to avoid. But what really, really helped me was just finding something that I was good at and having confidence in myself. Because once I started working out that I was good at comedy and I was good at stand-up and I was... Uh, I was even before I was good, when I worked out the type of person that I am and who, what I was working towards, right, which was being a stand-up comedian, that was when I found my purpose and that was when I worked out, I don't give a fuck if this person doesn't like me or I don't give a fuck if this person thinks something of me because at the end of the day, I'm doing comedy and I'm a comedian, I know who I am. Because all that shit of like trying to work out what the right thing to say and what to say in this situation is you going, I don't really know who I am and I don't really know how to explain who or what I am, but I definitely want this person to like me. So I have to try because I don't really have anything inside me to present. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not comfortable because you don't necessarily understand who you are and what you're working towards clearly by your email, right? So what really helped me was one, uh, becoming skilled in something and, and working towards having skills before I was skilled, right? Because, you know, whether it's martial art, which also helped, martial art was great for me, sport and shit like that. Um, it, it just gave me confidence, and that's really what it comes down to is gaining confidence and also working out that you're thinking too much. So that's what helped me was just, and also a lot of practice, a lot of fucking practice. I was never a very social person. I was never the most sociable person. I still am not. I'm on the Gold Coast and I'm spending it in my fucking hotel room when it's perfect weather outside and when I could probably hit up people that I know on the Gold Coast and go out and have a lovely day. I would rather spend it alone, right? I'm just that type of person. Um, but I started just fucking pushing myself out there, pushing myself into uncomfortable social situations and going out there and just trying to converse with different types of people, talk to girls, a lot of shit like that, man. Um, so I would say that, yeah, it's definitely a skill that you can learn talking to people and being sociable. And now I feel so comfortable in like every situation. I can make, I can make people uh, talk. Um, I can make people like me. I can make them laugh. I, I just feel comfortable. And that comes from a few things, which is, focusing on getting better at it because it is a skill, reading up on how to get better at it, finding something that, that I was passionate about and doing that so that it gave me confidence into, into essentially being like, I am this type of person. I am a comedian and I'm fucking good at it and I love that. And uh, even if it doesn't give you confidence, it gives you something to talk about. What do you do? I'm a comedian. Oh, wow. That's cool. Conversation starter. If you have no hobbies, you have nothing to talk about. So yeah, I would just do that, man. Read how to win friends and influence people and just talk to cunts more and do things you're passionate about uh, that give you confidence. And it's not video games, right? Because I loved video games and I was great at them and I still play them and I'm still good at them and I'm still passionate about them. But let me tell you something it does not do. It doesn't teach you how to talk to someone face to face. Um that doesn't help. Not a hobby that helps with social interaction. Try a martial art. That'll give you a lot of confidence, dude. Be, just ha, just knowing that you're you're fit and knowing that if it came down to it, you could fuck someone up gives you a lot of confidence. Never fuck someone up unless they start it, but it does help. All right, so that's how I'm going to end this episode. Here is uh, telling someone, telling you guys that you should learn how to fuck someone up. Um, oh, this will be a good one that I'll read out next episode. New girlfriend, more sexually experienced than me. Can't wait for that one. Uh, so, uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday and I sincerely hope from the bottom of my heart that you have a lovely Christmas and a very shit one.